Turbocharged Mark II MX-5. And what an awesome little toy this is. to actually make this video because there's so much information out there already um, that doesn't seem to be a need but as going through this build I saw that there's so much stuff missing out of the basics of turbocharging one of these vehicles so to try and go through that now as briefly as possible I don't want to waste anyone's time so I'll try and keep it brief and try and keep it concise turbocharging one of these cars um, on a standard engine I think being conservative, 250 horsepower is your absolute limit, about 230 foot pound of torque as well. If you want more than that, forged rods will see you being able to go for about 300 horsepower. But any more than that, the limiting factor becomes the gearboxes. The five speeds are so cheap they are disposable, but the six speeds are actually stronger, although five times the price. Other than that, you can do bell housing conversions, but it gets so expensive then. I know you can use a BMW gearbox and bell housing adapter, but you're talking thousands of pounds. So now that's that out of the way, basics of turbocharging. Put simply, in the UK, G19, Scuzzle, Black Cat, they're all fantastic, will all do you brilliant work and, and trusted. I'll, I'll touch upon the basics of turbocharging but then um, go into, into the hidden little costs that all add up and make the overall cost of the build probably about double what you'd expect it and what I, I thought it would actually be. If you can take the motor out to do the whole conversion, do so. For me it made sense because I was doing clutch and um, I really didn't like the idea of drilling my sump for the oil return with it in situ. So it just made a lot of sense. But also fitting the coolant reroute and um, organizing everything was so easy. With it on a bench, um, on an engine stand, it was just a joy really and it made the whole thing so much more fun. extra things on this build. I mean, everyone knows with the basic turbo kit, it's manifold, turbo, downpipe, intercooler, and then you have your bigger injectors and your spout plugs. Then you go for some management, probably mega squirt, everyone else seems to go for that, or MET221 seems very popular now. Um, and then you have your wideband and your boost solenoids. You can go stick that all on, go and get it mapped, go have loads of fun. But I was quite naive in thinking that's exactly what I was going to be able to do because there's so much more that goes into it if you want to do things right. Cooling is, is quite expensive all said and done. You know, you've got your alloy rad, your oil cooler and a coolant reroute. If you want to do things properly, get a, get a clutch. You don't want to be wasting your time on track days so clutch and while you had it flywheel and there was things like the Inconel studs very expensive but again you don't want the turbo wobbling off the damn manifold again with the manifold go for a cast run if you can but if not brace that turbo and also brace the downpipe to the gearbox it's quite simple stuff but it'll just give it an extra an extra chance Again, when I put my setup in, the um, turbo was actually touching the chassis leg. So we ground the lip off and I had to spend over £100 on some stiffer engine mounts. Again, these things just incrementally add up to costing you a lot more than you factored for originally. Again, a free-flowing exhaust system. I'm actually running this more power with the uh, new exhaust system um, with 4 PSI less than with the standard system. Uh, another begrudging item I had to buy was the Skunk 2 throttle body. Especially as I fitted it, and a common issue on them 
why is that the jam open? So I had to rebuild that and actually move the the, spare, the hole for the spring so then it puts more tension. But the reason I did that is because under boost applications, uh, the OEM throttle bodies have been known to shear the throttle body bar. Um, I know it's fairly rare, but again, I just didn't want to take the risk. So some of these items, like the throttle body, like the in-canal studs, they're very expensive for what they are. But when you consider the package you get afterwards, they're very usable. 1,000 kilogram, 250 horsepower car. It's just, it's just magic. It's just absolutely magic.